What do we got here? Two barrels uh, that used to be full of wine. So we just got the barrels from William Chris and we're gonna be finishing the number 10 bourbon barrel in here. Smells amazing. I think there's a little left. <laughs> Somebody get a straw. So I'm gonna go get the gator. Use the gator to go get the tank we're gonna sanitize. We did a quest recently um, in the Patreon and they chose a wine barrel. Yeah, yeah, this is for a, get up an here. Eleanor barrel that just no matter how long we waited, it wasn't getting to something we liked. Right. So we thought, how do we fix this? And one of the options was, should we dump it in a wine barrel? Yeah, this is the barrel that the community chose. That's right, we, it's a Senso barrel. And by the way, uh, we just did one really quick rinse. We left some of the dregs in there. Let's go to the warehouse and then I got a couple more questions. Uh, I'm gonna drag this on a dolly because Dad's using the gator. <laughs> Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Hey Rex, when I said make it rain, this wasn't what I meant. We get it? Yeah. All right. This is barrel number this 10. This is Eleanor 10. Okay, so the wine barrel we are finishing in is right there. Yeah. The bourbon that we're wanting to change drastically is bourbon barrel, Eleanor barrel number 10, because as we said in the other episode, yeah. it's weird. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to actually lower the forks on this so we can roll the barrel, dump it into the tote that Deb just sanitized. First things first, this is important. We need to know legally how much we've moved into this barrel. So we're gonna weigh it. We're gonna weigh the empty barrel. When they filled this, it was at X weight and X whiskey. Now it's been three and a half years, which means there's a lot of evaporation. Yeah. Right? So we need to report how much is left when we dumped it into this. Okay, so while we're getting the scale set up, we got a bunch of people in the back shipping out Patreon stuff, so you're gonna hear noises and how much do I weigh things. This? So one of the things we're not talking about right now is the entry proof that this whiskey is as it goes into this wine cask, because yeah. one of the main considerations whenever you're putting alcohol into a barrel is what proof it's going in at. Yeah, if you go higher proof, you're gonna end up pulling, pulling more barrel tannins and heavy dark notes and some of the spice and cinnamon. If you go lower proof, and this is a huge generalization, you go lower proof, you switch to sugars instead of uh, tannins. Even after it's put into the barrel, you can switch up the proof at any time if, if it's getting too sweet or too bitter. Yeah, absolutely. You can change it. Okay, so we're gonna be checking it how often? Uh, we're gonna check this one weekly. There's work happening here. There's things happening. Right. Don't go over the edge, please. <laughs> Let's zero this bad boy out. Good, let's see how much Daniel weighs. You weigh 163. How about you? Well, I, I feel like I need to empty my Into your pockets? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, take off your pants, we're probably gonna add 30 pounds, so <laughs> you might need to take your jeans everything. off, yeah. 219. Woo! All right. 94.4 pounds. Wait, hold on. This looks fairly ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It turns out right before we went to do this, we discovered the stuff that we needed to pump it was missing. So are we dropping it? So out? now we're just dumping a barrel. Now this is normally what happens. You go to a huge distillery, they have these troughs. They'll roll a barrel upside down, pull the bunghole and just let it dump into the trough. Yeah. Then the trough funnels it down and collects it into hoses and puts it in things. This is usually what happens except for John Deere and wood scraps. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably not involved normally. It's okay, Eaton. You'll be fixed soon. Okay, well, I will do. Your new home. Yes, I am gonna... We replaced the wood bits with some super clamps from the studio. Slightly less scuffed, but still super scuffed. Now, do we want to lower it down just to make sure even splashing? It's right here. Oh! Oh! Whoa! 
I forgot to dump out the rainwater. There it goes. Almost 40 gallons. About three gallons. Wow, that's pretty 40, good. Three gallons, okay. Deb is going to proof test so that we know what the entry proof is. Ah, 114.6. Okay. Okay, write that down in your phone because we need that. 114.6364. It's delightful. Emma's campaigning to not put this in the wine cask barrel, even though you all voted to put it's so She's trying to veto. Though. She's trying to veto the tribe's decision. I don't have veto. She's power. convincing all of the good people that are filling the Patreon <laughs> packages. She's rallying the troops. <laughs> you haven't, you haven't learned yet, have you? <laughs> It smells like it's pushing wine fumes out. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, this episode is all about the giant scuffed clusterfuck of how the Crowded Barrel Whiskey Company transfers whiskey from one barrel to another. When we don't have any of the correct equipment. <laughs> right. But right. we make it work anyway. And it's totally legal. Are you well, sure? No. <laughs> The government, all they care about- Legal-ish. All they care about is that we're not having undue loss and that we're paying our taxes. Oh yeah. So if we had equipment, what was this process gonna look like? Oh, we wouldn't have had you have used a forklift. We could have just pumped it from one barrel oh, right into yeah. another barrel. There's hoses and a pump that go straight to the thing there. Yeah, and we have everything we need, but like one hose. We're okay. missing one hose. This is going nice and slow. This is emptying into the Senso barrel and we're gonna be checking on this weekly. After that, the only thing left to do is uh, weigh it. Mm hmm Yeah, weigh it. Weigh it, and, uh, and then we'll just put the bunghole in and roll it into a rack. <laughs> Emma, we determine your spirit animal. What is it? What's your spirit animal? The lush. The lush. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I check in on Emma at the story when she's running the bar, mm -hmm. I catch her drinking people's leftovers. Ew! Yeah. No. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm having a nap! <laughs> I want to give you a gift, Daniel. Yeah. And I don't often give you public recognition for, thing, <laughs> for things you're good at, ah. but mm. <laughs> you're very experienced and learned in the ways of whiskey. <laughs> I've noticed something though. I've noticed yes. Yes. it was in the William Chris video that we were talking with Chris mm -hmm. and, and you guys were like, well, this is just the best guess. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what the barrel is going to turn do. out? It's very experimental. It's impossible to tell. And then we were doing a Patreon video with the Imperial Stout Barrel, mm -hmm. and in that video, you were like, "Yeah, this is really just the best guess. You don't know." And I think you're being held back. I think there's a level of whiskey experience and knowledge that you're missing. Hmm. It really comes down to I Google it. Intimacy with the barrel. Oh. Inside the barrel. Really savoring every nuance, <laughs> every note, every scrap of complexity. How do you get into a barrel? Hiya! Wow, look at that charred. Oh, there's water in there. Oh God. You're gonna be so intimately familiar with this barrel. Here's the other part of my theory. We're both very busy. Okay. We don't have time for you to live in this barrel and really absorb the nuance and like complexity of what, in the wood. of what new oak barrels deliver into a whiskey. We need to speed it up. Yeah. To really. <laughs> Spicoli Joe. He's having a good time. Yeah. To really, to really. 
have that barrel release, it's magnificent. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're going to agitate the barrel with you inside. How? So the barrel releases the magnificence. Which helmet do you want? No, 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 no. We have. I want my actual old motorcycle touring full face. Yeah. Okay. Shit. Right here. I mean this. It has colors, but okay. You ready? I do. I, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I already hit my helmet. You get in. Here, you push up. Oh, that's it. All right. My knees are on the bottom of okay. it. All right. <laughs> so well, your head can't. You need to be head first because your head poking's out very, very dangerous. No, fuck that. Your head poking out is very dangerous. I can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't get in any further. Your head. You need the smaller helmet. No, no. You got this, buddy. This is how you become the best. Hey, you want me to shove some padding in there? What the hell are you doing? Oh, crap. Just gonna wedge this. What is that? Don't worry about it. Ah. Now I feel claustrophobic. All right, you ready? No, sir. You're the best, Daniel. Oh, yeah, sure. Ah. Oh, that Level four Somalia! Yeah.